Hi right, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, well, let me try to reset this damn camera. Anyway, I don't know if that's any better. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on Thursday, April 7th, 2022, and the little dog and I need to head out and do some planet nibbling, and I had prepared I well was thinking about doing a full-fledged oilprice.com uh, roundup but I got sidetracked with some uh, doomer article in USA Today uh, so I'm just going to do a brief we can, you can always go on oilprice.com and find all of these stories but we're just going to take a uh, quick tour through Canada and this one was right here on today's mainstream media oilprice.com uh, asking the question is it time to revisit the Keystone XL pipeline Yes, with countries around the world experiencing increasing energy insecurity following the Russian invasion of Ukraine, many are looking for ways to increase their oil and gas supply. Rising prices and severe shortages have demonstrated <clears throat> how reliant the world is um, on Russian oil and gas. Uh, blah 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 this has led politicians and citizens across Canada and the US to question the possibility of revisiting the construction of the Keystone pipeline which could help transport vast amounts of oil all across North America Yes, we're talking about 830,000 barrels per day of the, uh, of the dirtiest fossil fuels on the planet coming from Alberta to the great state of Texas. Oil sands are considered one of the dirtiest forms of crude. It is extremely viscous and requires a high level of refining to even convert it into fuel. Yes, the approval of the pipeline extension would suggest that the North American oil industry is likely to thrive for decades to come. And anyway, they go through the history of on again, off again. Uh, <clears throat> For some, they say it is still it is still not too late to revisit Keystone XL. Yes. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, now lawmakers in the U.S. are encouraging. President Biden to reconsider his cancellation of the project. Uh, Montana's U.S. Senator Steve Daines has called on Biden for the immediate restart of the project. Uh, a recent poll also suggests that U.S. citizens are increasingly in favor of the Keystone development following recent world events. Uh, yes. Anyway, uh, good Lord, you are going to hear a lot more, uh, a lot more about this debate. Uh, anyway, you can go on oilprice.com, and I just wanted to, uh, you know, touch on this is how that little pretty boy planet-saving Justin Trudeau 
who obviously would love to restart the uh, Keystone Pipeline. What else is uh, Justin Trudeau doing to uh, you know, meet his climate obligations from all of these climate talks uh, to bring down uh, greenhouse gas emissions and save the planet? Well, Canada green lights controversial $12 billion deep water oil project. The federal government of Canada has granted its approval for a $12 billion oil project offshore of Newfoundland and Labrador to be led by the Norwegian state oil major Equinor. Uh, Yes, according to the Norwegian country, they have identified recoverable reserves of some 300 million barrels of oil. Revenues for the Canadian government are estimated at around three to three and a half billion dollars. Uh, for letting Norway uh, pump out 300 million gallons of oil from the North Atlantic. Uh, the project is highly controversial given the Trudeau government's energy transition agenda. Yes. There you go. Uh, then they talk to all the tree huggers, uh, you know, pointing out uh, this might not be the best idea. Of course, according to the Sierra Club, a blowout from the offshore project would endanger various species in the vicinity, blah, blah, blah. Supporters, on the other hand, note it would have a relatively low carbon footprint and that the project will create a lot of long-term jobs. Canada has pledged to become a net zero emitter by 2050. As part of this plan, the federal government eyes a reduction in its national emissions by 40 to 45 percent from 2005 over the next eight years. Uh, Canada's oil industry is the biggest polluter in the country and has been under growing pressure to reduce its footprint. However, a push for more production has recently developed to take advantage of the new opportunity created by the sanction-induced lower supply of Russian oil in the key markets such as Russia and the U.S. Uh, so there is uh, $12 billion to pump out 300 million gallons of oil to reduce Canada's carbon footprint, but uh, let's do not forget the electric vehicles. Uh, this is another way that Justin Trudeau is saving the planet. It's not just gassing up gas sucking cars, but all right, sounding a lot like Joe Biden, Canada to invest $1.6 billion in battery metal supply. Yes, Canada will spend some $1.6 billion on building a battery mineral supply chain. Uh, there you go. Nickel, lithium, cobalt, and magnesium will be at the heart of the plan, which would 
involve a boost in both production, meaning mining, meaning digging up the planet to save the planet, and processing of these metals and minerals. Yes, the plan is the latest signal that North American economies are waking up to the crucial nature of the mineral supply issue for the energy transition. The U.S. and now Canada both have very ambitious transition goals that feature electric vehicles heavily. Yes, challenges do remain. Yes, uh, but despite the challenges at the government in Ottawa, can you say, you know, a little pretty boy, Justin Trudeau seems to be aware of the importance of mining for the advancement of its EV plans. This is Natural Resources Minister Jonathan Wilkinson talking about saving the planet by digging up the planet. Quote, there are some particular projects that we are looking at and working on at the present time. Whether they are extraction or processing uh, need to be accelerated significantly and that is what the critical mineral strategy will be about. <laughs> Yuppers, the critical mineral strategy to save the planet by digging up the planet. Uh, and you better believe what is uh, bad for the U.S. and bad for Canada is bad for everywhere else on the planet. Uh, in with the new boss, same as the old boss. Anyway, guys, I think we get it. That, uh, sorry. But anyway, I've got to wrap this up, and uh, the little dog and I have a job doing some planet nibbling. We have to get out our gas-powered weed whacker with the chop saw blade on it. And, but we really are cutting down invasive species here in Texas. We're going to go cut down about an acre of invasive species hopefully give uh, these drought-plagued oak trees a little more water to drink. So we're going to go save the planet by chopping down the planet. I highly suggest you get out there and chop down some invasive species while you still can. Are you ready to go do some invasive species control, little dog? I'm just ready to get out there and chase some squirrelies. There's plenty of swirlies where we're going. Bye, guys.